Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So over here, we're back to the OWASP Open Web Application Security Project Juice Shop. So this is a vulnerable web application server in which we can test out our different ways of injection to gain access into the site, looking at different way of manipulating and controlling the site. So we have gone through a lot of demonstration tutorials on this e-commerce web application penetration testing series so quickly join as a member so that you gain access to full flash videos on practicals as well as lectures about how you can do web application penetration testing so back to the demonstration and tutorial for you today we can go ahead and click under account okay so i'm going to introduce to you a couple of things that is going to be very important as part of learning web application penetration testing so the first thing you want to do is you want to examine the site. And how do you do that? How you could do that is go to the top right corner. So whether you're on Firefox or whether you're on Chrome or any browser. So what we want to do is to be able to inspect what is going on as we navigate across the entire web application server. So go to the top right corner, click under web developer. Okay. And then you click on, say, for example, under network. So I'm going to click on network. And I'm going to zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to see. Okay, so we click on not yet a customer. And over here, we'll be presented with a user registration page. And of course, we can immediately see that we got API, application programming interfaces running as part of the web application server. All right, so we can go ahead and do a registration. All right, so please provide an email address. So let me enter, say, for example, a user email address. So I'm just going to key in some email address. So you can just go ahead and test it out. And we'll enter the password as, say, a particular password. So I'm not going to tell you the password so that you can make a guess about what we are entering. And then you'll begin to appreciate how we are monitoring the network data that is being sent in and out of the web application server. And as we scroll down further, all right, so they have security questions. So I'm going to click on, say, um, Mother's Maid's name, all right? So I'll just enter, for example, Loy, okay? So once we're done, go ahead and click on Register. All right, so once we click on Register, it says Registration completed successfully. You can now log in, okay? So we got all of that done. And of course, you can see over here that we have different kind of methods. So we got get as well as post. So we have posted information or data into the server and get meaning that we have pull information out directly from the system. Okay, so we'll click on say API users and we can click under the requests. All right, so request is the information that we are actually sending over. And of course, we can see the response. All right, so it says ID number 18. So this is an interesting role. So behind every web application server, behind every mobile application, they have a huge database. So it's like an Excel sheet, all right? So it is a 2D column and row structure for them to store data, all right? So data like text format are very, very easy to be stored on MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL, and so on. So those are the relational databases that help us store all this data all this information in a very structured format, especially for text-based information. So that's why we're moving a lot of big enterprises, big web application servers, and moving all those into not only SQL databases, okay, like MongoDB that we have done a demonstration on earlier. So over here, we're seeing information about ID. So again, this could be one of those information that could help us understand about the structure of the database. So we have ID 18. And most of the time, IDs are primary key. That means they're unique identifier inside a table, inside a table. So in this case, there is a very high chance that we have one seven more users before this account. Okay, so we may have one seven more users before this account. So if you create another account on the registration page, we may look at ID 19. And that would validate our assumption okay so moving back we can go under account and we can try to log in to the website with our newly created account okay so let's go ahead and enter that loy liang yang at hotmail.com and of course i will enter the password and i can go ahead and click on remember me and i can click on login okay so once we're in 
of course, we can see a lot more information coming from the network tab on the web developer. So we have like, who am I? We got login. We got all these different information. Okay, so we see again, bit. All right, so you see bit number six, and we have the email. And of course, I can click on who am I again. We are looking ID eighteen. So this is the primary key of the table, helping us uniquely identify the user who is logged in now, and also as a way for the table to uniquely identify users who are logging in and out of the system. Okay, so we also got a separate application programming interface called quantities, and of course. We can see the ID of the quantities. All right, we can look at all this different information, and this could be information directly available, being pulled out from a table that actually stores all these different products. Okay, so we are seeing all those different information coming out directly from the web application. So, for example, if I click on say one of the items, right? So let's say I click on a couple of the items. I click on say apple juice. I click add to basket. All right. And of course, we can see information being sent again. I can click a separate item, add to basket. And again, we're seeing all those details being sent over. So here we can see the request and the response. So in the response case, we can see success. So we successfully added the item onto the system, and we could see coupon, we could see user ID, and all those different information. And again, we are able to see all these different details, and we got. API again, the application programming interface for basket items. All right, so we got ID number ten. All right, we got product ID. We got a quantity. Okay, and we got a separate basket item. So again, ID eleven. All right, and we have product ID. We have basket ID. We have quantity and all those different data and information. So moving to the top right corner, we go back to your basket. Okay, let's go ahead and click on that, and we see a retrieval. Okay, we see retrieval of the ID. All right, and we can see the structure. All right, we can see the structure of a shopping cart. So we see all this different information: the description, the data, the pricing, the quantity, and all this different data. So we can, in a way, map out how the tables operate for a shopping cart, how the tables look like, and how are they are interlinked. Okay, so the next thing I want to demonstrate to you, to share with you, is to click under Storage Inspector. So go ahead and click on that, and we have Storage Inspector over here. So of course, we have cookies information, and we can actually go under Session Storage, and we have the specific IP address. And in this case, I'm hosting the IP address internally on 192.168.0.106 on port 3000. So click on that, and we can see the bit number. Okay, so the bit number could be the shopping cart ID that is being stored. In the server, so if I change this, for example, to a lower number, all right, because it seems like they're using additional of one every time there is a new user, every time there is a new shopping cart, that could be the case. That could be the logic behind the scene. So if I go ahead and click on say five, and I hit enter on that, I go back to the web page. Okay, so in this case, we have Apple Juice one quantity, we have Apple. Homemade at one quantity. So if I do a refresh, and I would see over here, we have two quantity. Okay. So what if we change the value of this to one? So one could be the first shopping cart. Okay. So if I do a refresh again, and we can see somebody else's shopping cart. So this shopping cart is the first on the list of someone else's account. Okay. So this could be one of those ways in which we can access. Other people's personal information, other people's profile, their shopping cart, and many others. But so by understanding the basic structure of how we could manipulate the session storage information, how we could look at the data that's coming in and out, we'll be able to change those data, change those value, giving us access to personal information, sensitive data, and those information could be. Credit card details. They could be the date of birth of the person, the home address, and all these different data could be accessed on and through the web application server. So with that, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. So stay tuned for many more web application penetration testing series, and we'll try our best to share as much as we can. Because thank you so much once again for watching.